You're now listening to the Inside BBL Show with your hosts, Brain and Horse. G'day, guys. Welcome back. You're watching another Insight BBL show. I am the SC Brain, and as always, I'm joined by the Super Coach Horse. How are you, mate? Hi, mate. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's uh, in the theme of the Insight Mini. We're going to be in and out pretty quick here today, but we thought, why not come to you and bring you a team preview for every single team in the BBL in the lead up? We're about 40 days out. I've tinkered my, with my team probably about 15 times in the last week because there's news every day, Horse, and... Uh, that definitely hasn't stopped today, has it? No, it hasn't. With the Australia A contest going on against uh, India A, we see NASA just skittling through them. Bo Webster's taken a couple of polls as well. Looking forward to seeing how the Australian A batsmen, namely McSweeney and Bancroft, do. There's a bit of green in this deck, so I want to see them sort of bat it out a little bit and, yeah, make some runs. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Um, we'll see, obviously, if there's any impact there from these games and and who misses out or who finds a test berth. But, guys, we're here to talk today about the Adelaide Strikers to kick things off. Before we do, hit that like button, hit the subscribe. We've got plenty of content coming your way very soon. So, uh, so you don't miss any of those episodes moving forward. Hit the subscribe button. You'll get a little notification straight to your phone. And we've got an unlimited league, obviously, prizes to give away every single week. The code is 650202. I'll repeat it. 650202. Get in that league, win some stuff, and brag about it. Now, um, mate, in the theme of these little team previews, we're going to talk about the ins and outs for each squad horse. We're going to go through predicted 11 as well and give our thoughts on what round one looks like for every single team. And we're going to talk through the guns, the value players, the cheapies, and the players that we're going to be fading this year. Now, uh, let's let's move straight into the ins and outs for the Adelaide Strikers. You'll see them on the screen for you YouTube viewers out there. We've got Fabian Allen, who comes into the Strikers lineup, West Indian all-rounder. We've got Ollie Pope, the vice captain of the England Test team and also wicketkeeper. Uh, we've got Alex Ross coming across from back to Adelaide from the Thunder. And we've got Jordan Buckingham coming across from the Heat as well to the Strikers. Mate, what stands out for you here? Fabian Allen. He could be the best fielder in international cricket. If you search Baby and Allen catches on YouTube, you'll be swamped with the amazing catches that he takes. And it's not just that. He's taken forfers in T20 internationals before. He's got the, the little, is it left arm orthodox that he bowls? He's a big hitter at the back end of the innings. He's definitely a target for me once he arrives here in round two. And he's only 117K. Very, very cheap. Bat bowl all why, rounder. Why is he, when we've got the rest of the international? marquee whatever you want to call players at 152 he's probably one of the most exciting international players that we've got coming across he's only like he yeah it's cheap because i think he went in the second round of the draft not the first i think the premium the platinum draft picks in the first round will come in at 152 which is why we see ollie pope another one of the guys from the strikers here coming at 152k as a batsman only though i think that's going to change i think he's going to get the wicket keeper jewel status by the time we open up i think he will too if he's not bowling he's off he's yeah, let's hope he's not for the striker's sake. Yeah. Um, we've also got the outs here. We've got a big out in Rashid Khan. You know, it's always a shame when we don't see Rashid Khan in the in the striker's kit every year in the BBL, but he uh, has decided he won't be over here this year. We've got Wes Agar across. Uh, so he goes to the Thunder, which is a big in for them. We'll talk about them at the end. Uh, mm -hmm. Ben Menenti, comes, he goes to the Sixers. We've got David Payne and Adam Hose also uh, unsigned or undrafted this year. So those are the ins and outs for the Adelaide strikers. And, of course, Let's move into our predicted 11 and horse. Do you want to start rattling through and talking through uh, how we see this team shaping up in round one? Oh, the number one player in BBL, super coach, Matt Short, the captain at number one, potentially or more than likely opening with Darcy Short at two. They were quite good as an opening partnership last year. We see Chris Lynn, who's at north of 190K at three. Weatherold at four, Jamie Overton, we've received some interesting news and we both saw today that he is bowling for England at five, which has thrown a bit of a spanner in the works. Fabian Allen at six once he comes across in round two. Baisley at seven, Thornton at eight, Boyce, Pope and Buckingham if he's fit come round one. Ollie Pope will be due back in round two and he will take the gloves straight away, I believe. I would assume so, yeah. And I think, yeah, with Fabian Allen, obviously, that they haven't named the West Indies T20 squad yet to play England. I'm still unsure as to whether Fabian Allen's going to be in that team, but you would naturally assume that he probably will be, um, which means he'll probably drop out 
Uh, the guys that are missing out from this lineup specifically, we've got Thomas Kelly, Harry Nielsen, the keeper there. Um, you know, there's it's hard to hard to know how they're going to play this one, but they're probably going to need a keeper in that lineup. And then we've got Jordan Buckingham. Uh, we've got him in there. We've got James Baisley also in that squad. But we've we've left out Brendan Doggett. Now I'm unsure about how this plays out, but Jordan Buckingham could be every chance of maybe not being fit or not being ready with that side strain that he had last week. That's which right. means that I would assume that Brendan Dogger would be the guy that would come into that squad. You would assume so, yes. So, mate, the guns, I think it goes without saying the gun that everyone is going to need in their team, and we'll talk about why very soon, is Matt Short. We initially went the other direction in our first team reveal and said, let's try and leave him out because it's just so expensive at 304K. But do you want to give everyone an idea as to why we're now thinking that he needs to be a must? I, I don't think you can leave him out. For example, he plays the Thunder in round one. The last time he played the Thunder, or the last two times he played the Thunder, he scored 137 points. And the time before that at Adelaide Oval, he scored 159 points. You've got the C on him. That's north of 300 points. There's a player, or this player here, Matt Short, you cannot leave him out with his potential to bowl. He bowls his offies. He can get wickets. He's quite economical with the ball. Batting, he's probably the best T20 batsman that we have in Australia. He's good off the back foot. Adelaide Oval to have short, square boundaries. His ability to clear the fence as well as just lock down and get his eye in as well. He's just a must-have in your BBL team. Now, initially we were thinking he's not a must-have, but there's another guy now that we're probably going to have to target as a trade-in in round two, and that's Jamie Overton. And initially we were going to call him a fade. As of probably this morning, I was still calling him a fade, but the fact that he is now bowled for England in, in the most recent game there that they played against the West Indies where they got absolutely toweled up, by the way. Um, Jamie Overton bowled four overs, one for 17 today, and obviously his first game back. So they're looking to ramp up his workload over the next month, I would naturally assume, um, okay. because he only bowled four overs there. So if he's if he's fit enough to be bowling his full allotment in the BBL every game for the strikers, he's a guy you're going to want to target in round two, which means that you can't really get Matt Short and Jamie Overton in round two, can you? You have to have one. No, well, if you put both of them together, that's 500K that you've got to find somewhere to bring in potentially two of the best BBL players that we have playing in our competition. So we've both had to pivot in our team selections and found ways to bring in Matt Short. But Jamie Overton, if you go back and have a look at the highlights today, yes, he wasn't bowling with raw pace as he usually is, but with anyone that's coming back from injury, especially a fast bowler, it usually takes them a couple of weeks to get back into the swing of it and really start throwing them down. And with no Ollie Pope in this team, you would naturally assume that is it is it would be Harry Nielsen, I guess, would have to play round one? Round one, yes. Who do you think misses out there? Because um, the, uh, Harry Nielsen's not a top uh, a top order batter, is he? He's uh, he's someone who'll probably bat seven, eight, nine. Who misses yeah, out? I, I think he, he bats at nine, doesn't he? Like he's a, a keeper that... Bats down with the bowlers. Um, hard to say. Is Jake Weatherall? He used to open the batting as well with um, Carey a few years back, and then he sort of solidified himself in the middle order. But with Alex Ross coming across 84k from the Thunder, he's a rock solid option for the Adelaide strikers in the middle order. There, I think Weatherall's spot may be a little bit shaky. I think it's Weatherald's to lose, personally. I think Weatherald was okay enough last year at different points for them to start with him at least. But, you know, Alex Ross is is quality, plays spin really well through the middle of the overs too. He sweeps really well. So maybe that might be a, you know, I guess they're probably competing for that number five spot for me or number four spot because mm -hmm. um, everybody's going to have to slide down one when Ollie Pope comes back in. I would assume he probably bats four when he comes in in their round two double. Um but yeah, I mean, it's we're probably looking at a guy like James Baisley being the one that unfortunately misses out if if they have to play a keeper here naturally without Ollie Pope. So, a bit of a shame yeah. considering um, Baisley is fifty eight k and nice and cheap. We have seen Darcy Short keep previously as well, so fingers crossed they don't bring Harry Nielsen in and they can roll with Darcy Short. That would be fantastic. But yeah, I don't see that happening unfortunately. But mate, obviously guns Matt Short. The reason there is because you can't. You're going to have to target Jamie Overton in round two. I think you have to start with Matt Short. Um, what about the value, mate? Where's the value across the board for you? Uh, there's two in particular, mate. Number one, Henry Thornton. T20 specialist, really, really slippery. Bit of a down year last year. But without the likes of Payne, Overton still coming back from injury, you'll find that Thornton will be bowling death overs. He'll open up the innings as well, swinging the new rocket, 98K. That's a lot of value right there. 
Not, yeah, sub 100K for anybody who can go and score you 200 on a double week. Uh, he scored 260 round one two years ago, and everybody remembers it, whether you're an owner or a non-owner. It hurt you if you didn't have him, and it absolutely set you up for success if you did. And, um, yeah, I think he's a guy that at the Adelaide Oval seems to bowl quite well. He bowls quick, like you mentioned. Um, I think that they're going to be able to put some runs on the board too, potentially, the um, the strikers. That now, looks solid. Yeah, they do. They look good up top. So I'm thinking he's going to have a fair bit to bowl at too. And he will go for some runs, but I think he's just that genuine wicket taker that you want in your team. And that's what you're looking for in BBL super coach for sure. So I like it. Um, you mentioned Fabian Allen earlier, mate. I think he's the second one that we've got to look at in round two. Oh, I, I can't wait to see this guy play in Australia. He's, um, you know, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen our um, top 10 fielders prediction for this year. We've definitely got him in the top 10 somewhere. Uh, could be one of the better fielders in international cricket, I think, in my opinion. Anyway, um, some of the catches that he's taken are out, outstanding. And um, I think he's yeah. going to be fielding in hot spots. He's going to be probably getting a bowl through the middle overs as well. I would assume that they would use his left arm orthodox because um, I think there are some overs to be had there. It just depends on if they play both spinners in Pope and Boyce as well at the moment. I think they might. But, um, yeah, plenty of, plenty of value there for Fabian Allen, who could probably bat five or six as well in this order. Yeah, that's right. Uh, question for you. So we, we're looking at uh, the two leg spinners there, Boyce and Pope, and then we've also got Short who bowls off spin. If they're looking at the option of Fabian Allen, does that mean one of Pope or Boyce will drop out? Potentially, yeah. Because then they still have two off spinners and one leg spinner. Well, Pope, Ollie Pope just took six for 70 in the Shield game recently. Um, so he's, he's, bowling, he's bowling pretty well. He actually was pretty good for them last year as well, wasn't he? A bit of a revelation. Lloyd Pope. Uh, sorry, Lloyd Pope. Yeah, not Ollie Pope, the other the other Pope. Uh, he yeah, was Pope. good. Um, so I, I don't know. I think that Cam Boyce and just the pedigree of Cam Boyce and what he did last year was probably enough for him yeah. to be the number one. Um, but it's hard to leave one of them out, isn't it? Because they were both good at different periods throughout last year. Oh, but I think, really good. I think one does miss, personally. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that plays out. Mate, what about the cheapies this year? Um, you know, there, there's a couple of decent cheapy options in the team. We've already mentioned James Baisley. If he doesn't get named, is he still a potential to use as a loophole option because he's a bat bowl all-rounder? Yes. I, I believe so. Like, he's one of the cheaper players at 58K. And if he doesn't play, you've got a loop there. So you can sort of work your team towards that if indeed he does miss round one. But there's another one, Nate, that um, we're both – pretty high on and that's jordan buckingham he is uh yeah a talent he's a talent he's come over from the brisbane heat um and for me i think he probably could be the best 39k option to start the year now this is all pending injury he's obviously had a side strain unfortunately for australia a which was as recent as i think a few days ago so he as far as we're aware he'll be touch and go for round one but if he is fit He's, he's a must-have, I think, because he's going to enable you to get these Matt Shorts and these more expensive guys like Glenn Maxwell, Jamie Overton in round two. Um, there, there's so many premium guys we need in our team, and we're going to need a few of these 39K guys to be able to facilitate that. So Absolutely. he's a, yeah. a top-tier option for me. Yeah. What about the fades, mate? Uh, you know, we've talked about guns and value and cheapies and the guys we should be looking at. What about the guys you stay away from? This guy has a potential to be a gun, but he's just too expensive and... Like we say, one rock can send you off and then you're not doing much for the rest of the innings, especially, or the game, sorry, especially if you're not bowling. And that's Chris Lynn at 197K. In periods last year, he was unbelievable. But for a bat only at 197K, I think he's a fade, Nath. I think he has to be. I It, it just goes against everything I believe in with BBL Supercoach. If I'm picking a batsman at 200K, Um you want to get as many all-rounders in your team as possible. And when you've got so many good options this year, like Tom Curran, 40K more uh, 40K cheaper than Chris Lynn. You've yeah. got even uh, Bo Webster should bowl some overs and he fields in good spots. Uh, you know, Glenn Maxwell's a must in round one. Like you've got so many good options. It just doesn't make sense to target a batsman only at that price when you can get value across the board either with, with a better role as well. Right. So, yeah, definitely a fade to start the season. Um, I'd probably even prefer a Darcy Short at 100 and 15k or whatever he is to a Chris Lynn just from a value perspective I think you can get more from him per dollar so yes. um yeah I'll be letting Chris Lynn through to the keeper absolutely 
Guys, that's the Adelaide strike. Because short and sharp, these will be ideally sub-20 minutes. So, um, yeah, stick with us as we roll these out. You'll be seeing one every two to three days as we go through the preseason. We'll preview all eight teams as well. But there's our value, our guns, our cheapies, our fades, our predicted 11, and all the ins and outs for the Adelaide Strikers. Subscribe and like. We would appreciate that so that you don't miss any future episodes. There's plenty coming your way. And if you do want to become a Patreon Insight Unlimited member, the link is in the description below so you can get full access to us. Ask tons of questions. We'll answer them all. We'll rate your team and, and we'll uh, keep you in the loop of everything that's happening around the grounds. But we'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one. See ya.